Hey guys, as promised, today we are going to have a tutorial match between the Gate Ruler starter decks. I'm pretty new to the game as well, so this is really more of an opportunity for both me and you guys to pick up the rules of the game. So I'll be going slow, explaining the rules when necessary, and there won't be any special effects or editing. Let's begin. The first thing you do at the start of a match is declare your ruler. Set ruler! Apprentice! Knight! So on the left, we have the A1 Apprentice leading the Yokai and Giant Robo deck. For game preparation, I basically start with 0 cards in hand, 0 cards in energy. On the right, we have the K11 Knight leading the Demonic Dragon Summoning deck. As game preparation, I start with 2 cards in hand and 3 cards in energy. So my 3 energy cards are over here, now let me draw 2 cards from my starting hand. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to have the Apprentice start first. Now in Japan, the official catchphrase for starting the game is Gate Ruler Go! But personally, I don't find that very cool, so instead for my Gate Ruler matches, I'm going to use the game's official slogan as the starting phrase instead. Alright, let's get started. Decide your rules, decide your destiny. Gate Ruler! So the Apprentice is going first, and at the start of my turns, all I have to do is drive twice. The Apprentice can never draw any cards because as you guys can see under the Rule tab, this ruler does not allow you to have a hand. Anyway, driving means looking at the top card of your deck and being able to basically play or set it. Okay, looks like we're not starting with the best of luck. As you guys can see, the two cards that we just drived are horizontal cards, which means that they are events, which are kind of like spells and traps in Yu-Gi-Oh! So I can't really do anything with them now except set them, just like in Yu-Gi-Oh! But actually that's not so bad, because during the first turn, I can only attack with one card. So with that, I will now attack the opposing ruler with my own ruler, Apprentice. Yes, your ruler can attack. And as you guys can see from the bottom left, the ruler has 3 stats, it's HP, it's attack, which is the damage dealt to units, and finally the strike in green, which is the damage dealt to the opposing player, which is 3. So now the knight will take 3 damage from its 11 HP. Just like Vanguard, damage is taken in the form of damage checks. First check. Okay, looks like we're getting lucky with the knights here. So the first card we checked on damage is Dark Jin. And as you guys can see on the top left, right below the unit's level or cost, you'll see a red symbol saying CNT, which stands for counter. That means this is a counter card. First of all, when you reveal a counter card during your damage check, the damage is instantly negated. So in a sense, the knight just avoided the apprentice's first hit. After that, you can then activate the counter ability, which you guys can see on the bottom over here, special summon this card. And so now we just got a free unit and we will place it in the defense zone. While you have a unit in the defense zone, in exchange for that unit not being able to attack, your ruler also cannot be attacked. But the apprentice's attack for 3 damage already went through, so the damage continues. Second check, this time it's just an event card, not a counter, so it is sent to the damage zone. So once the knight accumulates 11 cards in their damage zone, they lose. Final check. Amazingly, we got another counter again. This time it's the event's absolute barrier and on counter, put this card in your cemetery. So it has no special effect, it just nullifies the damage. And with that, the apprentice ends their turn. As the knight, at the start of my turn, I can make two of my energy active, but of course this isn't necessary during the first turn. After that, I draw two cards. But if the knight goes first, they only draw one card during the very first turn. And also, if I could direct your attention to the rule tab, the knight has a summon cap of two. So he can only perform a normal summon twice per turn. As my first normal summon, I'll bring Black Knight Riha to one of the attack zones. On the top left, you will see that it is level 0, so it costs 0 energy to play. Then since Dark Jin only has 2 HP, so it's not the best protection, I'll move it out into the second attack zone. During your main phase, you can freely move your units between zones. Then for 1 energy, I summon at 1 cost, Midas G Goldberg, he has an effect which allows me to benefit from Abyssal Summoning, but I'm just putting him there to protect me since he has 4 HP. Then I'll set one event. Now moving into the battle phase, I attack with my Jin, which has a strike of 1. Damage check, Galactic Swordsman, Grand Galak, it's not a counter. Then I'll attack with Black Knight Riha, which also has a strike of 1. Damage check, Masurao First Machine, and it also isn't a counter. And now I will attack with my ruler, the Knight himself, with 3 strike. I think it's about time the Apprentice pulls some counters. Oh, and right off the bat we've got one. Emergency combination, but just put this card into the cemetery. Second check, Sky Soldier Type 0 Sorai, that's damage. And final check, Space Phantom Recruiter, 
This is a counter, and on counter, use this card's overdrive. You may choose one level 1 or lower enemy unit and take control of it, then your opponent takes control of this card. So now, the apprentice will make use of that effect to steal Midas G Gold Bird, putting him in his own defense zone, but in exchange, the knight gets the recruiter and puts it in his damage zone, which is not too ideal because it only has an HP of 1. With that, the knight ends their turn. And as usual, the apprentice conducts two drives. So both of them are units and both have the blue overdrive ability as you guys can see on the top left. So the overdrive effect is now activated. Starting with Masurao first machine, this unit gets double attack until the end of the turn. And with that, it is summoned. Now late night police officer Yobuko activates his overdrive as well. You may look at the top card of your deck and set any card that can be set. If you don't set it, put it on the bottom of your deck. So we are really hoping for a settable event card here. The top card of deck is very, very nice. It is the event's emergency combination, so it can be set. And I will now do so. After the overdrive effect resolves, the unit enters the field. First, Yobuko will attack Space Phantom Recruiter. Yobuko has two attack, while Phantom Recruiter has only one HP. So if it takes this attack, it will be destroyed. In response, the knight activates their set event. Iron Storm. Its use timing is immediate, so it can be used at any time while it is set. For one cost, choose one or more enemy units and distribute two damage among them. So now by paying one energy, the target chosen will be Yobuko who only has two HP. So if it receives the Iron Storm, it will be destroyed and the attack will fail. But in response, the Apprentice activates an event as well. Do or Die Defense Battle. Use timing immediate. At zero cost, choose one ally unit and it gets plus 3 HP until the end of the turn. So with this effect, Yobuko's HP increases to 5. So even if it takes the 2 damage from Iron Storm, it survives. And with that, both events resolve. So Yobuko's attack goes through and Space Galaxy Recruiter is destroyed. It goes back to its owner's graveyard. Now Masurao has double attack from its overdrive. So with its 3 attack, first, it will attack Dark Jin with only 2 HP. So Dark Jin leaves the field and with double attack, Masurao stands and attacks Dark Knight Riha with only 3 HP as well, so it is also removed from the field. The Knight's field has essentially just been wiped out. Now the Apprentice will attack the Knight for 3 damage. First check. Oh, it is a counter card! Vesterous Rex, the Fell Dragon Quadrac of Rough Dust. On counter, if you have 2 life or less, end the turn, so it's not very good getting this card early on. It is just sent to the cemetery, damage nullified. Second check, Jack the Ripper, not a counter. And final check, Priest of Demonic Dragon, not a counter either. Now both players are tied at 3 damage each. The Knight goes active, they make 2 of their energy active, and they draw 2 cards. Okay, this is a pretty bad situation right now because Midas G Goldberg standing in the Apprentice's defense zone is pretty insane with its 4 HP. First at 0 cost, the Knight will summon Do Kalfar. Then at 1 cost, unusually talented Johan. Then he activates an event from his hand, Army of Darkness. At 2 cost, use timing normal, so you play it during your main phase. Put the top card of your deck in your grave, then choose one unit with Abyssal Summoning from your damage zone and add it to your hand. So let's pay two cost first. Top card of deck is milled to grave, and the Priest of Demonic Dragon with the Abyssal Summoning ability is added to the hand, essentially recovering one life. And now, it's time to battle. Dokalfar starts the attack with only one attack on Midas G Goldberg. So in Gate Ruler, damage to a unit accumulates within one turn, but is reset at the end of each turn. So its HP from 4 is now reduced to 3. Now the Knight has no choice but to attack Goldberg himself with his 3 attack, finally destroying Goldberg, which is sent to the cemetery. Now unusually talented Johan with its 2 attack will attack Yobuko with 2 HP. But in response, the Apprentice activates an event, Blaster Cannon, use timing immediate, Choose one of the following, either deal 1 damage to the opponent or deal 2 damage to an opposing unit. The 2 damage is inflicted to Johan, which only has 2 HP, so it is destroyed before the attack connects. With that, the knight has exhausted all of their attacks and resources, barely making a dance on the apprentice's field and they have to end their turn. Active! Now the apprentice will drive 2 again. First, they have the vanilla units, Land Warfare Expansion Weapon Guardian, so it is placed in the defense zone, followed by the events card, Warp. 
Since it was drived, it can now be set. Now, since Guardian has a strike of 2, which means it inflicts 2 damage to rulers, it's gonna be swapped out into an attack zone, changing place with Yoboku. Actually, since Yobuko and Masurao have the same amount of strike, it's probably better to put Masurao in the defense zone since it has another 4 HP that the knight will have to get through the next turn. Time to attack. Yobuko attacks the knight for 1 damage. Follower of Demonic Dragon, put in the damage zone. Now Guardian attacks for 2 damage. First check, Black Knight Riha, damage zone. Second check, and it is a counter, Army of Darkness. On counter, choose one unit with Abyssal Summoning in your symmetry and add it to your hand. There is only one. The Johan that was defeated by the Apprentice the previous turn, so it is returned to the hand. Very nice synergy going on here. And finally, the Apprentice attacks for 3 damage. First check. Death Salier. Damage zone. This is the 5th damage, so I will put it horizontal so that you guys can see it a bit more clearer. Second check. Jack the Ripper. New stack. Third check. Priest of Demonic Dragon. And with that, the knight has accumulated 7 damage. They can only take 4 more. Turn end. And now the knight goes active. 2 of their energy goes active. And they draw 2 cards. First, they set an event. Then at 1 cost, they choose to normal summon unusually talented Johan. But they are forced to do something a little drastic here. They normal summon him on top of Dokalfar, which displaces Dokalfar and sends it to the cemetery. This is something you're allowed to do in Gate Ruler. Basically, no matter what units you have on the field, you can always summon on top of them by sending them to the cemetery. And with this, the conditions are fulfilled for the Demonic Dragon Summoning Deck's key mechanic. Johan activates Abyssal Summoning. Normal, send this card to the cemetery. And if you do, choose one unit from your cemetery with Abyssal Concerto, and you may special summon it by fulfilling its conditions. So first we sacrifice Johan. Right now, there is only one unit with Abyssal Concerto in the cemetery, and it is none other than Vasturus Rex. However, it has a very steep condition. Put five darkness cards from your cemetery on the bottom of your deck. Currently, including Johan that was just sent, there are exactly five. So this is why I had to deplace Dokalfar. However, there's another reason why I wanted to. Dokalfar's Dark Core ability activates. When this card is used as material for Abyssal Concerto, it can count as two cards instead. So since it counts as two, I only have to send three more. I will keep Johan in the grave in case there's a chance to recycle it again later and return these cards to the bottom of the deck. And with that, Vasturus Rex is now Abyssal Summoned. Unfortunately, it cannot be put into a defensive zone. And its effect, when this card is Abyssal Summoned, choose one enemy card, destroy it, and recover one life. So let's recover one life first, and I am going to choose my Death Salier, which is another dragon with Abyssal Concerto. Now the Apprentice's Mighty Guardian with two strike will be destroyed. But in response, the Apprentice activates your event. Emergency Combination. Use timing, while this card is set, you may play it whenever there is a Robo on your field. Look at the top 4 cards of your deck, choose one Robo or military unit from among them, and either put it on top or underneath a Robo on your field with no charges, and if the unit on top is a Robo, it gains Charge Shield. So when they say Charge and Charge Shield here, it basically means the same thing as Soul and Soul Guard in Body Fight. So what the Apprentice is trying to do now is to find an applicable card from the top 4 cards of his deck, put it under the Guardian as Soul, and then the Guardian can use Charge Shield to discard that Soul in order to survive this destruction. Now let's see how lucky the Apprentice is. First, second, third, and fourth. And it looks like he's pretty lucky because he's managed to flip the Space Ninja Ginga, which is a Crime Knot Ninja and a Robo. Now the thing is this, Ginga is actually a really strong card with 5 attack, 5 HP and 2 strike. So instead of putting it as the soul of one of his Robos, it would be much better for him to put Ginga on top of one of his Robos in order to get an even stronger unit while absorbing the weaker Robo as soul. So now he places Ginga on top of the Masu Rao on his defense zone. The remaining cards are sent to the bottom of the deck. Emergency combination resolves and Guardian is destroyed by Vestorus Rex's effect. Now it's still the knight's main phase and they still have one normal summon with one energy remaining so now they'll use it to summon Johan in an attack zone. Attack phase, Vestorus Rex attacks Ginga with its 7 attack so Ginga is destroyed but since it has charge shield it can discard one of its soul or charges to survive and returns to full HP. Now Johan will attack Ginga 
with two attack, and the knight will follow up with a second attack on Ginga with three attack. That's a total of five, wiping out Ginga's HP, and Ginga is eliminated. Although the knight managed to clean up the field somewhat, they weren't able to inflict any damage to the apprentice this turn. Turn over, the apprentice goes active, and double drive. And oh dear, oh dear, the apprentice just managed to drive the strongest card in their deck, level three. Galactic Swordsman Gren Galak with like 6 attack, 6 HP, and 4 strike. So it is immediately played in an attack zone. Your other drive was an event which is now set. Now since Gren Galak is such a beast with 4 strike, the Apprentice currently has 8 strike total on their field. Whereas the Knight currently has 6 damage, and since their total life is 11, they can only take five more hits. So the Apprentice only needs about slightly more than half of their damage to go through in order to end the game this turn. Attack phase. Yobuko attacks with one strike. First check, and it is not a counter. Follower of Demonic Dragon, damage. Now Grand Gallic attacks the Knight with its four strike. If all four of this damage goes through, the match will instantly be over. First check. Oh, but, but, our very first card is a counter, and not only that, it is the Dark Jin, which on counter is Special Summon. And of course, the Knight will place him in the defense zone. So now, the Apprentice is not gonna have a clear shot at the Knight, and it's impossible for him to win this turn. The Knight is confirmed to survive. Second check, another counter, Absolute Barrier, put this card in the cemetery. Third check, Follower of Demonic Dragon, damage. And fourth check, Dokalfar, damage as well. So now the knight stands at 9 damage, they only have 2 life left, but the apprentice cannot inflict a direct attack, so it just attacks and destroys the jinn. So the jinn is defeated, and the apprentice has no choice but to end their turn. The knight goes active, 2 energy goes active, and they draw 2 cards. Things are getting very interesting. First, the knight sets an event, and then at 2 cost, they displace Johan in order to summon another Abyssal Summoner from their hand at 2 cost, the Priest of Demonic Dragon. And now, Abyssal Summon! By sacrificing the Priest, Deathsalier will be Abyss Summoned from the grave using Abyssal Concerto. Condition, put 2 Darkness from your cemetery to the bottom of your deck, and the 2 are Dark Jin and the currently sent Priest. With this, the Knight gets Deathsalier on the field, and it has an effect. During the turn this card is Abyssal Summon, it gets Defender. Which means at the end of the attack phase, it can be moved from an offensive zone to a defensive zone. Very useful. Now first, it is probably way too dangerous to leave Grand Galax since it has 4 strike on the opponent's field. So first, we'll use Vestor's Rex, since it has 7 attack, to attack Grand Galax. But at this moment, the Apprentice activates an event. Warp. Use timing immediate. Choose one ally unit and move it to an empty zone. However, if you use it on a card that was just attacked, the attack fizzles, or rather, it misfires. So essentially, what happens now is that with Warp, Grand Galax teleports into the defensive zone, and Vesterus's attack, which was aimed at this line, goes through but misses. So the attack is essentially wasted. Warp resolves. And since Grand Galax has 6 HP, that's more than enough to stand up to both Death Salier and the Knight. You have to combine their attacks in order to take it down. Which then prompts the Apprentice to activate their second event, Do or Die Defense Battle. Choose one ally unit and it gets plus 3 HP until the end of the turn. So Grand Galax HP now raises to 9 and how much damage does it take? 5 from Death Salier, 3 from the Knight, a total of 8. So it survives. So the Knight essentially was not able to do anything this turn. They end their attack phase, but thankfully with Death Salier's Defender, he will at least get some protection. He ends his turn and the Apprentice goes active. Double drive. So we have the vanilla unit Jinrai, as well as Sorai, which is a unit with Defender. But unfortunately, getting two units here isn't the best because the Apprentice's field is basically already full. So they are actually just going to displace Yobuko in order to summon Sorai, and then let Jinrai expire and go to trash. Because since Sorai has Defender, there's really no need to keep a third unit on the field. Galak is moved into a defensive zone. Attack phase, Galak attacks Death Salier. It's 6 attack, wipes out Death Salier's 5 HP. Now the center is open and the knight only has 2 HP left, 
Sorai has two strike, so with its sex. Now you guys would have seen this earlier, but the knight actually has this events, uh, this defensive event set. Absolute Barrier, you can activate it at any time when you are directly attacked for only zero cost in order to negate the damage. However, strategically, the Knight is not going to use this now. Because after Sorai's attack, there is still the Apprentice's attack which is worth 3 strike, so that is more worth stopping. So although the Knight might lose right here if all of Sorai's damage goes through, it is much better to hope for one counter on this attack and then use Absolute Barrier on the Apprentice's direct attack. So. We're not gonna use this just yet. Alright, two strike, first check, and it is the Black Knight Geist damage. The Knight is now at 10 damage, only one life remaining, possibly the final check. Oh, dude! Guys, I swear, I swear I did not rig anything in this battle, okay? I did not swap out the cards, I did not rig the card order, I literally just shuffled both decks in Tabletop Simulator and just let the match play out like this, okay? I swear! Counter, Vestrus Rex, and on counter, if you have 2 life or less, end the turn! So not only does this allow the Knight to survive Sorai's attack, it stops the Apprentice from attacking as well. So the knight gets another turn. Furthermore, they get to save their absolute barrier for the next turn. And also, since the turn was ended instantly, Sorai's defender cannot be used to give the apprentice protection. Dude! This is some insane development, man. Turn over, the knight goes active, two energy, two draw. Oh my god, and he just drew into another copy of Johan as well. Alright, so first normal summon at zero cost, Dokalfar, and displacing it, of course, at one cost, we bring out Johan again and Abyssal Summon! By returning Dokalfar, which is treated as two materials, to the bottom of the deck, Deathsalier is Abyssal Summoned, and of course, again, it gains Defender for the turn, so the Knight is guaranteed some protection. Now moving into battle, now that the Apprentice has no more events, now is the time to take back the field. First, Vesterous Rex attacks Galak. It's 7 attack, manages to destroy Galax 6 HP, and finally that big threat is removed. Now Devsalier will use its 5 attack to crush Sorai, and finally the Apprentice's field is empty, the Knight goes for the direct attack, 3 strike. First check, Space Dulahan, it is not a counter, so just damage. Second check, Yobuko, not a counter either, damage, the Apprentice reaches 5, 6 check, I mean 3rd check. And it is a counter this time. Warp on counter, play this card, but there are currently no units to teleport on the Apprentice's field, so it is just sent to the grave. Now the knight activates their event, make a killing. At zero cost, you may play this set card whenever your opponent is damaged. Discard a darkness card from your hand, and if you do, draw two cards. So we will now discard the Black Knight Geist from the knight's hand in order to get an additional two draw, accumulating some resources. Very nice. And with that, the knight's attack phase comes to an end. With Devsalier's Defender, it moves into the defense zone. Dude, dude, dude! I was not expecting a simple tutorial match like this to be so hype. Even though the Knight literally only has one life left, he's managed to turn the table so well, still has an absolute barrier on defense, and like, his defense zone is pretty buffed up too. I can't wait to see what happens next. Alright, the Apprentice is going up. Double. Drive. Oh man. Oh man, this is a very intense pair of overdrives right here, which might just spell the end of the night. So first, uh, this event is set, and then Masurao on overdrive. You guys saw this earlier already, it gets double attack until the end of the turn. Now it is summoned. Attack phase, Masurao attacks Devsalier. It has 3 attack, Devsalier has 5 HP so it survives, but since Masurao has double attack, it restands and attacks again, removing Devsalier. And now the Apprentice goes for the final blow. 3 strike, only 1 damage needs to go through. But of course the Knight activates Absolute Barrier! At 0 cost, play this set card when you are directly attacked, the combat damage becomes 0, the Knight survives. But the Apprentice is not done yet! Deactivate your event! Blaster Cannon. Use timing immediate, either deal 1 damage to the opponent or deal 2 damage to an enemy unit. Right now, the Knight only has 1 life left, so of course the Apprentice chooses to inflict 1 damage to the Knight! Final damage check. The Knight is seriously on the ropes here. But it's a counter! Iron Storm. 
on counter, play this card. Choose one or more enemy units and distribute two damage among them. The only target is Masu Rao, but since it has 4 HP, it is not taken down by Iron Storm. But with that, the knight lives to see another day, and the apprentice must end their turn. The knight goes active. Untap, two draw. The apprentice currently has five damage, which means they still have seven life left, so now is still not really a good opportunity to try and settle the game in an all-out attack. The knight still has to pay cautiously. First, they set an event. Then at two costs, they bring out the Abyss Summoner, Priest of Demonic Dragon. And of course, you guys know the drill. This is basically happening every turn now. Abyssal Summon. While I would really like to bring out the other Vesterous Rex in the grave, honestly, I just don't have enough resources for that. Anyway, with Devcellier again, we return two cards with Darkness. Bring him out and he gains Defender. So first he attacks and destroys Masu Rao. Then Vesterous Rex will attack the Apprentice for two strike. First check, damage. Second check, damage. Now the Knight will attack for three. First check, we got a counter, warp. But again, there is no unit to warp, so it is discarded. Second check, another counter, Space Phantom Recruiter. This is the stupid card that basically changed the flow at the start of the game. Again, on counter, use Overdrive to take control of one of your opponent's level 1 or lower units. Fortunately, right now, all of the dragons on the knight's field are extremely high-powered, so the Recruiter also doesn't go through. Third check, and it is this same event over here. I think I forgot to show it to you guys just now, but it's Moment of Offense and Defense, and it is not a counter. So, the Apprentice now has 8 damage and the Knight must end their attack phase. Devcellier's Defender moves it into the defense zone and turn over. The Apprentice stands, double, drive! And well, I guess the Knight is screwed because the Apprentice has just drive another copy of Grand Galak, which I think is the only card in the deck capable of taking out Devcellier in a single blow. The other card is Inagi, which is a pretty strong cost zero, which gives all of your military units plus one HP. Both are deployed. If the cards had just been a little different, like if Grand Galak had been like just a weaker unit or maybe an events card, the Apprentice probably wouldn't have been able to deal the finishing blow this turn, and the Knight most likely would have won the next turn by conducting an all-out attack. That is how close this match was. Of course, Grand Galak goes for the first attack, wiping out Devcellier, and now that the path is open, the Apprentice attacks the Knight for 3 strike, but with 1 life left, the Knight cannot even afford to take a single damage. First check, and I guess it's over. Jack the Ripper. Not a counter, the knight has lost its final life and the match is over. So the winner of this tutorial match will be The Apprentice. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope you guys now have a better idea of how to play this brand new card game. Let me know if you guys would like to see more Gate Ruler content because take note that these are just the starter decks so you can do much more insane stuff with the first booster. And I'll see you guys in the next Gate Ruler video.